Hey there everyone, that sexy nerd is back again! And yeah, you know, I'm in a different location this time. You know, just had to had to get uh filming on my little vacation spot. So we're watching Death Battles, uh Omni Man versus uh Homelander. And my god, man, if there's one thing that like has been my brand new obsession, it's been invincible, man. That that show when it came on, beautiful, absolutely amazing. You know, I mean, and it came on the same, you know, ironically, this is an Amazon property versus another Amazon property because both shows are on Amazon Prime. But when Invincible came out, I was just, I just immediately became obsessed. And I knew about the comics. It was, it's the guys, and for all of you who don't know, uh, Invincible was made by Robert Kirkman, the guy who made The Walking Dead. And honestly, he surpassed himself by telling this story because honestly i think invincible is much better than the walking dead a more compelling story and you know i i really think that you know he just got his feet wet with the walking dead and he gave us this in order to, uh, this is his magnum opus basically and you know before you make this completely like gushing all over invincible i do have to talk about the boys and the boys, obviously, as you've seen, I'm a huge fan of that, too. Like, most of my videos have been about the season three trailer. And I, I love the show. I love the comics. I think the comics are a little bit better than the show. And that's why I think I still like, I actually like Invincible a little bit more because of the fact that the show is actually following the comic story a lot better than the boys actually is. Because the boys comic was way better than, it was like, you know, it, it's it's not exactly the story that's being told on the screen, but, you know, it, it's still good enough. And, and I love the show. And like, again, um, we're gonna see, we're gonna eventually see when it comes out, uh, in June, and I'm going to be doing every episode on here. So, but anyway, let's not just uh, uh, spend all this time talking about these two. Let's get into the death battle. And remember, everyone, if you want to see more of my content, please like and subscribe for that. The world's greatest superhero, brought to you by Vought International. Few heroes yeah, have yeah. stood the test of time with more aplomb than the very first, Superman. But what if absolute power did, in fact, corrupt absolutely? Answer. We're all screwed. Okay. He's whiz and I'm boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win. A oh death man, battle. they're showing footage from Joyce Diabolical. I gotta finish that. I'm bringing that show to you guys. Up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. No, it's Omni Man. <laughs> Had you go in there for a second, huh? Uh, not really. His name is in the title of the video. Well, you might be forgiven for mistaking Nolan Grayson for his classic comic inspiration. He's even got that well, sexy like, mustache that he's not man. afraid to hide with terrible CGI. Born on the planet Viltrum, <laughs> Nolan was sent to Earth to act as its super-powered alien oh, defender and spread hey, the enlightenment of his utopian homeworld. And as his superhero alter ego, Omni-Man, there was no one better suited to the task. Man, he man. saved the world countless times, worked alongside the Guardians of the Globe, and even married and had a son, Mark. Life couldn't be better until Mark inherited his dad's Viltrumite powers. That's when Mark found out that his dad was a stinking rat bastard liar! Turns out, Viltrum wasn't exactly the peaceful utopia Nolan promised. Peaceful in the sense that they culled half their yeah. population, murdering billions with their bare hands until yeah. only the strongest were left, united by a common purpose. This Viltrumite yeah, empire then went on to conquer there, but... planet after planet in their home galaxy, murdering any who dared oppose them. So just scratch that whole peaceful part entirely. And turns yeah. out Omni-Man was here to do that same thing to Earth. Sorry, Mark. Your dad's a dick. Even worse, yep. he's easily the most powerful being on the entire planet. Imagine combining the raw power of a Kryptonian and the bloodlust of a Saiyan. Boy, and what you get is basically a Viltrumite. Due to their unique DNA, Viltrumites are composed of smart atoms that they can manipulate to achieve superhuman feats, like holding their breath for weeks on end by drawing more energy from the oxygen inside them. Kinda reminds me of that whole bioelectric aura thing Superman has. That's basically how comic writers bullshit a science -y explanation <laughs> for his powers. <laughs> Except Yeah, um, speaking of that, that was Superboy Prime punching the universes out of order, and man, 
I just, we, these death battle videos keep going back to Superboy Prime. I love it, man. He really deserves more attention. Even though he's a completely overpowered villain, it's scary to think about it, his concept. You know, it may be a little silly, but I'm sure people, if they ever brought him into live action, that would be ama an amazing sight. People will go nuts. Ugh. Smart atoms make even less sense. How can atomic structure be designated by your DNA? DNA is made of atoms. It's completely nonsensical biological hogwash that I cannot stand. Uh-oh, comics fans. I'm calling this debunk. How'd you light them Both on fire? Can fly, withstand near absolute zero temperatures, and even possess insane healing factors. You know, stuff like getting punched through the stomach, having your guts ripped and out, ripped or out. having your uh, face smashed up in a tomato soup. I don't mean to exaggerate, poor but mark. Viltrumites in this series get fucked up All and somehow survive. However, that too much trauma to the brain or heart can overtax their healing factors, and intense heat can be especially damaging. Even the most powerful Viltrumites can be killed by extended baths in the spicy hot plasma mm. of a star. And because of their abilities, their inner ear vestibular system is far more sensitive than a regular human's. Intense sonic pressure will disrupt their fragile equilibrium and even prevent them from flying. Mm. Though pushing themselves to their physical limits only ends up making them way stronger. Yeah. And considering Nolan has been alive and planet conquering for thousands of years, he is easily one of the toughest Viltrumites yeah. around. Like, other aliens attacking him will literally splatter their bodies against him. Spoilers on that. inherit everything from his dad. Despite his alien genes, Mark was raised as a human with our weak, pathetic human values like love and compassion and not brutally murdering the shit out of everyone you see <laughs> like a maniac really made it difficult for Nolan to relate to his kid. Such as when these aliens invaded Earth. Mark tried his best to minimize casualties and outsmart his numerically superior foes. Nolan, meanwhile, tackled their leader through the portal back to their homeworld, then spent some time systematically annihilating yeah. their planet for even daring to take over. I don't even know how these guys even come back. Uh, annihilate is understood. Destroy it. Nolan flew so fast that his body lit their planet's atmosphere on fire, creating massive country-sized explosions, with his own body as the projectile. Omni-Man has flown across galaxies in only a week, survived punching a hole through a planet, and even deflected a meteor the size of Texas. Assuming that means the diameter of the meteor is equivalent to the distance from the top of the panhandle to the Gulf of Mexico, that would make it 1,300 kilometers wide. And weigh over 4.6 quintillion tons. Moving at re-entry speeds of over 11,000 meters per second, it had hit with enough energy to twice over. So Omni-Man is strong enough to slaughter those who considered him an ally, the Guardians of the Globe, all to ensure as seamless a transition to the coming Viltrumite rule as possible. Too bad for Nolan, it wouldn't be that easy because he'd have to go through his son first. Mark was horrified by his father's treachery, spurred on by the reveal that Nolan only viewed his mother as a pet, a disposable broodmare. Invincible That's fought Omni-Man to save the planet. And that's when Mark's real Viltrumite training began. Get it? Training? Like the train? Oh, yes, we get it. On. It was a good pun. Jesus. But if anything, it was Omni-Man that learned a lesson about humanity that day. He may have tried to turn Mark into a Viltrumite, but in reality, as Nolan fled Earth with tears in his eyes, Mark made his father human. Welcome to Vought International, a multi-billion dollar American conglomerate whose number one products are the greatest superheroes on the face of the earth. That's right, superheroes are real and they're big business. Imagine a company that possesses a monopoly on popular culture, pumping out movies, TV shows, action figures, and video games constantly, drowning the masses in a slurry of focus-tested nostalgia opium with no end in sight. Yeah, imagine. Within yeah. Vought's pantheon of gods among men is their premier super team, The Seven, and its leader, Homelander. He's got the looks, the charm, the Jesus, and most the importantly, Jesus. he's got the power to slaughter all of America's enemies at home and abroad. Oh, what the hell? This guy oh, I gotta finish watching that. And shits eagles. But Homelander's squeaky clean corporate sheen is only skin deep. Far from the big blue boy scout he's marketed as, Homelander is probably the closest thing to Lucifer on Earth. Remember bad future Biff from Back to the Future? 
Now give him superpowers and media training. Vought's official story is that Homelander was an alien who landed here as a baby, a tale we're all familiar with. And one that's total bullshit. Homie was made in a lab with Vought's proprietary super soldier serum, Compound V. And he was a complete success. Too much of a success. He was murdering rooms of terrified scientists before his umbilical cord was even cut. In the comics, Vought had to keep a remote-controlled hydrogen bomb strapped to him at all times because they had no idea what else could possibly Kill him. As he grew up, he was subjected to psychological conditioning to make him the greatest and most profitable hero of all time. It wasn't long before he debuted as Homelander, the ultimate defender of the American dream. Homelander possesses massively superhuman strength, speed, and durability. Oh man, I gotta he can watch fly that. at hypersonic speeds, see through walls with x ray vision, and detect a person's emotional state from just the sound of their heartbeat. But you know you're done for when he breaks out his heat vision, which is strong enough to slice through crowds of people or split airplanes in half. Or scream so loud that it shatters the eardrums of anyone around him. Those are Shut innocent up, bystanders man. whose ears are exploding, by the way. Oh yeah, he totally botched this mission to stop a plane hijacking, so he forced each and everyone on board to die in the resulting crash so they wouldn't reveal his incompetence. Well, a home... Yeah, and that's how September 11th happened in the comics. They blamed that whole thing and said it was, yeah, it was September 11th. Flanders' yeah. powers may be real, but his heroism is a charade. Though he plays yeah. his part well, he cares nothing for the peons he's forced to protect. The only thing he treasures is, ironically, his public image. Turns out being raised as a lab experiment doesn't create a healthy person. Mm. But don't worry, he eventually cleaned up his act mm. and started a totally 100% healthy sexual relationship with a fellow superhero. That was just a cop, that was just, just a show. happened to be an actual Nazi. Speaking of sex, the man you know, I'm always saying comics. we should figure out how Superman and Lois uh, get busy. Well, forget that, because Homelander proved that they can't when his ejaculation blew his partner to smithereens. What? Who drew that? Look, there's no way to sugarcoat this. Considering a human's load has much less mass than a shotgun pellet, it would have to be moving significantly faster to achieve the same kinetic energy. Over 1,500 meters per Look second. Look at his face, man. Point five times faster than sound. <laughs> That's right. Homelander can bust a nut faster than the speed of sound. Well, good night, everybody. Imagine if he tries to blow a load on that they made this dude the most powerful <laughs> being on the planet and a psycho murderer. What? That's no exaggeration. Stillwell even commented that Homelander has proven immune to every weapon known to mankind, no matter how powerful. Humanity literally lacks the ability to kill him. That'd include nuclear weapons as powerful as the Tsar bomb, which exploded with the energy of 50 megatons of TNT. Actually, it could have exploded with twice that, but the Soviets who created it were afraid it would irreversibly alter Earth's biosphere and end the Jesus. world. Jesus! That's right, we all almost died. And that's the kind of shit Homelander can shrug off no problem. He's strong enough to throw a jet with one hand and fast enough to outspeed a C4 explosion. Despite being an emotionally stunted man-child, Homelander is still surprisingly cunning and able to manipulate those around him. Though it probably wasn't too smart to piss off the world's angriest limey, Billy Butcher. Yeah, turns out forcibly fathering a bastard son with someone else's wife is not a good idea. Of note, as unjustifiable as it is, to Homelander, this gave him something he never had before. In the show! Some small measure of control over his own life. Being born Vaught's star pupil meant he was under their thumb from the day he was born. His super-powered son was the first thing that was truly his and might be his best option for a new beginning. <laughs> or not. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> oh, that looks beautiful. Howdy, neighbor. Coco? It's warm. You just show up in homie's house? You know, Nolan, Homelander is more than just a superhero. It might be cynical to say this, but he's a, a brand. And it's very important to me that that brand mean something. And if I'm playing second fiddle to some goddamn alien, what's really the point, right? What do you think, Debbie? No, oh, she's shy. Oh, this guy just wanted so to die today, didn't he? So understanding? Get the fuck out of my country. Oh, well now. 
I'm going to feed you your own heart. <laughs> that sounds about right. <laughs> Shit. That was a great life. Yes. Seriously, I'm not here for your country. Yep. Yeah. I'm expecting a beat down like he did with Invincible. <laughs> Well, okay. Never been hit by some of your own size before? You have to turn with the punch to reduce. Yeah. Better. Okay. What's the matter? Are you going to cry? <laughs> Doctor, I'm done with you! I'm gonna flash right that little shit son of yours! This wobbless neighborhood! What? And every goddamn person you know! Oh, oh he meant it literally. Remember what I promised you. Merry Christmas. <laughs> wow. KO! Yeah. Is, about right. About as short as it I thought sure it was going to be, too. Like he was working out some aggression there. Ooh, Despite wow. Homelander's dominance within the world of the boys, he's a big fish in a small pond, relatively speaking. Homelander can move faster than sound, while Omni-Man can move faster than light. Mm. Homelander can survive a nuke, while Omni-Man can shatter the moon twice over. To be fair, Homelander did have a couple of abilities Omni-Man didn't, like his heat vision. And while Viltrumite healing factors have failed against continuous exposure to the heat of stars, that still took quite a bit of time, and there's no reason to think Homelander's heat vision was anywhere near that hot. Hell, Nolan's tanked heat vision from the superhero Mean Supreme before, who can vaporize people in an instant. Even if it was hot enough, Omni-Man's superior speed would cut him off before he comment. could do any lasting damage. Similarly, despite being able to disrupt his equilibrium with his super Sonic screaming, Homelander wasn't strong enough to capitalize on it in any meaningful way. Plus, while Homelander is pretty devious when the situation calls for it, Omni-Man has been fighting and conquering worlds for thousands of years. He comes from a warrior culture based on fighting. Homelander, on the other hand, comes from a test tube and never had to push himself as a fighter because he was always so much stronger than everyone else. And that's the key difference between them. One is a warrior, and the other is a bully. Homelander yep. was never going to give up easy, but Omni-Man's skill, power, and Viltrumite heritage earned him the win. When it comes to Superman knockoffs, Homelander had to eat his heart out. The winner is Omni-Man. <laughs> that was great. Death Battle is back, and we've launched a badges. Magneto? Against who? Freaking Magneto versus Tetsuo. Holy crap. That looks amazing, man. Wow. But yeah, that fight was great, wasn't it? <laughs> I knew it was going to be good. It was like, it was like they said, it was like one of those, um, you, uh, those bullies versus UFC fighter things that they had, you know, where they'd have like someone who was bullying someone else go up against a UFC fighter and they get completely annihilated like every time. I mean, it's basically how it was. They knew, we all knew that's how it was going to be. We all just wanted to see Ho Homelander get a shit wrecked. And that's... And we all knew it. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, and you know what? In the respect for them, I'm not going to spoil any too, too much more, you know? 
because it's uh, they, they did a good job trying not to spoil a lot of stuff, even though they did have to show a lot of stuff from later issues in both comics. And I never even seen the boys diabolical. And uh, I'm bringing that to you soon. Uh, I, I got a little sidetracked with uh, with the show, so I'm going to see if I can bring out some more more videos for you. But I've only watched the first three episodes and I only have uh, videos for for the th first three episodes. I got to finish. And I see that episode in The Boys Diabolical, uh, uh, you know, the, the animated parts where Homelander is ripping people apart. And I'm like, oh, no, I got to finish that show. But yeah, uh, hopefully I can get you done to uh, get that done for you guys soon. And great death battle, wasn't it? Please like and subscribe and I'll see you all later for the next video.